We all know there are three types of annual rainfall in Australia. Too little, too much, and everything in between. However, in recent decades, scientists have observed some consistent changes to our climate, such as warmer temperatures in both summer and winter. And some rainfall patterns, like the autumn break in southern Australia and the wet season in northern Australia, seem to be less predictable and more extreme. So how well is your business set up to manage this variability? If it is not something you're doing well now, then it is likely to have increasingly negative impacts on your business as the climate continues to change long term. This video outlines three simple steps you can follow which will help your business manage climate variability. Not only will this have positive benefits for your profitability and risk management, it will also help reduce the greenhouse gas emissions footprint for your farm. The first step is to know your enemy by monitoring regularly. There are five things you should keep an eye on. Your soil moisture, your pasture growth, your animal feed demand, your reserves such as average pasture cover and supplements like grain and hay, and of course, the medium and long-term forecast outlook. There is plenty of help at hand to work these out. The MLA Feed Demand Calculator is a free online tool which allows you to work out the pattern of feed supply and demand over 12 months. The MLA Rainfall to Pasture Growth Outlook tool is also useful in planning. It presents rainfall and indices of soil moisture and pasture growth for the past nine months and a three-month outlook that can be used in enterprise planning. Rather than relying on media interpretations for climate outlooks, it is far better to go straight to the source. The Bureau of Meteorology site has a range of tools and forecast models which you can use. Remember to take into account the reliability of forecasts. Australian Climate is a free app which is also available on the web that can help you make informed decisions about your farming operations based on likely climate probabilities for your region. There's also lots of useful information on the Climate Kelpie website to help understand climate drivers, models and outlooks. In general, the tools and models can help you with monitoring the short-term weather outlook, which is less than two months ahead, as well as the longer-term climate outlook, for instance, for the coming season. The second step is to adjust your sights, set triggers for action and develop flexible strategies to respond to these triggers. An example of a trigger could be when average pasture cover falls below a certain target, or the number of grazing days available or feed on hand is less than a certain number. The targets will be regionally and farm specific. Or it might be an ideal amount of feed available in the coming season, which, based on forecasts, is unlikely to be met. The triggers that are set for each farm business will be unique based on the level of risk you're prepared to take, the flock or herd structure you run, and the environment in which you operate. Similarly, the strategies you adopt will also need to be unique to your business. The key is to make plans for what you'll do if your triggers for action eventuate. Some examples of strategies which you might consider are supplementary feed early to maintain condition which in turn could help to reduce methane emissions, especially in pregnant ewes and cows. Maintaining animal condition is important for maintaining productivity and avoiding an increase in greenhouse gas emissions intensity associated with increased animal maintenance. 
It is often more efficient to maintain condition using supplementary feed than it is to put weight back on or increase condition later. Have feed on hand. If it's there, you're more likely to feed it early. Ensure the carrying capacity of your land is not exceeded. The carrying capacity refers to the maximum number of animals that your land and local environment can sustain. Being prepared to sell stock at stores rather than finishing, for example, selling lambs or calves at weaning if needed. Wean early if needed to prioritise feed more appropriately. Establish containment areas set up and ready to go if needed. Many of the strategies that address climate variability will also have a positive impact on reducing greenhouse gas emissions, which in turn could improve your productivity. If you are interested in looking at how different management practices might alter the productivity and greenhouse gas emissions from your business, a number of calculators and tools are available. These allow you to model possible strategies and investigate how changing your practices might alter the productivity and financial performance of your business. Using the Australian Farm Institute's Farm Gas Calculator, you can also estimate the greenhouse gas emissions for different scenarios. Planning ahead and having flexible strategies makes it easier to make decisions quickly when seasonal conditions rapidly deteriorate or don't turn out as expected. The final step is to hit your targets by putting your plan into action and making a decision. Benchmarking has shown that producers who consistently perform well in good and bad years tend to have a significantly higher profit from livestock trading. They are on the ball and making decisions early. They also run efficient operations with high reproductive efficiency and high feed conversion efficiency from effective pasture utilisation. If you take no action, you're actually making a decision. And likewise, if you delay taking action, you are also making a decision which will have ongoing implications for your feed supply and budget. Delaying taking action is making a decision which will have ongoing implications for your farm business. It is a critical mistake which livestock producers can make. It's also important to set strategies ahead of crunch time as it's easier to take action under stress if you've already got a plan in place. One of the most effective strategies is to make many small adjustments rather than waiting and being forced to make large, more radical or costly decisions. Remember, things change constantly, so when it comes to measuring on farm, frequency and accuracy are the most important components. Following these three steps will help your business better manage climate variability and prepare for potential impacts of climate change in the future. In the words of Charles Darwin, it is not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent that survives. It is the one that is most adaptable to change.